The Zero FX electric motorcycle is today an auto fuel. Wait a minute, today it's bike fuel with Thomas because we're going to take a look at this form of alternative mobility, e-mobility, two wheels. It will be very exciting. Will I feel 10 or 20 years young again with this machine here? An electric enduro. No, I also have some off-road background. We will have some off-road fun. Well, short, soft off-road with it. Of course, the street is the main focus of this electric enduro. And we're going to find out, does this one really work? Motorcycle, just electric. What about range? What about the driving fun? All details on this bike here. Of course, in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. The Zero FX, you know, the manufacturer, American, and the import of Europe is in the Netherlands. This one here, the FX, is the light model. They also have some bigger models with increased range. We're soon going to talk about the range. But this one here promises the most sporty driving fun. It has this stealth look with a matte black design everywhere. Here, it's left relatively naked. You can see the lights here. I can also turn them on. And when I switch to the high beam, you see it's the other light. Pretty interesting. Also, the turning indicators here in the front. I think everything is not, let's say, designed to the max. It is more simplistic. Also, when you look at those features here, left open pretty much. But overall, I really like it. As I saw it the first time, and there you say, wow, that's really cool. All in black, also the alloys front suspension as well as rear. We just have about uh, just over 20 centimeters um, spring weight, for example. This is also enough if you want to do something off-road, but of course not for hard off-road purposes. And you can also see the tires. They are also available as supermoto tires. That would be the FXS then. So that one would be totally street um, optimized then. But those ones also already enduro street optimized wheels. So you know, some gravel roads and stuff, therefore it's really suitable. We're also going to talk about the um, uh, the drive chain later on, because that is also something to do with it. So what is your first impression from the Frontier with those two eye look? I think pretty cool, isn't it? The black design continues just in the side profile. See here the FX logo. Everything kept pretty simple. And we also still have the typical motorcycle form. But the difference is this one here is the battery. It's about 25 kilograms. And so far you could also replace it easily or get it out with a um, fast lock. But to the new model here, the manufacturer removed this function, they said the customers didn't take it out anyway. Well, I mean, I can, you know, I can think about when you take something 25 kilograms off and transport it, 
might be a little heavy so maybe just charge it on location yeah i can think about it but i mean why not keeping this function i think it would be good that you still have the possibility you see there's a classic foot brake right here as we know from every motorcycle is a different approach than the ktm freeride e the other electric enduro on the market is taking if we move that one and put both brakes you know on the handlebars soon going towards that and when you look very closely there are also those you know for the battery that they um, you know have some cooling from the lower parts very interesting to see and of course the other side of this motorcycle is even more important because on the other side you not only see the spring better here but also that we don't have a chain but the drive belt and this is of course better for road driving it doesn't need any major maintenance but then again for off-road riding it's not that bad not that good because when you get stones in there or mud or snow then it might break but there's also for off-road riders a chain kit where you then can replace it and ride with a chain so where you would normally find the radiator you can pull this one and then put in the plug and it looks like you know a plug from a printer or from a monitor like this and then the other end would just be this is a german plug now in a normal household plug and if you're really down to zero or one or two percent it takes about nine to ten hours to recharge it fully here you can turn the key or left side would be the normal lock then if you turn it on pretty interesting to see with the normal speed then temperature of um, of the of the motor of, of the battery there then the trip and how much capacity you have left time also is very interesting because we have measured that we have a range about 100 kilometers and three two so almost one percent of the battery means one kilometer that's pretty good to remember and the other models they offer they have double of the capacity but then also they are a little bit heavier. You can also change the driving modes. For example, custom would be some custom options, but the most important is sport and eco. Sport gives you even more boost. Eco would be the normal driving mode, but that one already has so much power. And the driving modes, you can switch here then also while driving. And this one here would be to turn off the engine, even though the ignition is running, maybe in case of emergency, for example. Um, so you have the possibility here too. And of course, standard applying the throttle right there and the normal brake just for the front tire. And on the left side, the warning indicator, switching light to the high beam, also high beam just you know on, on demand, just once, turning indicators and the horn right there let's try it when you turn on the ignition see how it sounds whoa <laughs> that was pretty loud wasn't it and we do not have any clutch here because it's an electric motorcycle and again the free ride e the, from ktm would have the rear brake right there just inverse like from from a bike from a, from a bicycle but here they just left it open because of the standard foot brake The saddle is quite soft and has also a good ergonomic form. It was also interesting, I have turned the machine on and if I apply the throttle, nothing is happening. So there's a safety mechanism as long as you have it here on the bar. When you, by the way, it's very good quality here, pretty solid. And then when you have lifted it, then you can also drive it forward. And this helps, for example, also, you know, when you want to, you know, move the uh, motorcycle around um, when you turn it off by the way you can still you know move it of course and then the engine also doesn't make any sound when you have it on you hear it also when you push, push it forward and backward and well I've asked the manufacturer does it do any harm to the engine well it's not supposed to do any harm but maybe you know when I move this I would just leave it out unless I really want the support that you know 
the, <laughs> the bike itself can help me move it. You can also drive it with two here with the side packs. Uh, however, you know, considering the space you have then up left on the saddle, it's maybe not meant to drive with two people all the time. Seating position, as we are used to from enduro, really upright. That's very comfortable also for longer term rides. However, it's rather something for city, countryside, not really for the motorway. There, you know, the, the bigger engines uh, are more meant to. And also it's really more fun at, at lower speeds. This one is small, agile one. And coming to the driving, it's really spectacular. I mean, I also have a motocross background and you could say, you know, then you would never maybe love electric motorcycles. And I can really tell you, even if you are the petrol head, you will love electric motorcycles just when you ride it once. So this bike here, it was actually the one I felt, um, I felt so, so much unified with and this went really quickly so you just start it you start riding you don't have to shift at all you know there's there's no clutch so you're also so fast because the torque is immediately applied so if you calculate the, the newton meters of torque and so power from the engine is about 44 horsepower considering this bike is about 130 kilograms that's still you know a good horsepower to rate to to horsepower to weight ratio so this is so quick, as soon as you apply the throttle, you're gone. And you look behind you and there's, there's no one. And even, you know, when you compare it to other motorcycles, the acceleration is so super fast, already in this eco mode. And then again, you don't lose any time while shifting. That pushes you even further, so it's even greater. Then if you switch, for example, to the sport mode, this gives even more acceleration when you're you know, on the flat terrain, really hammer the throttle in a sport mode, then already the front wheel is lifting up a little bit, even you know without you leaning backwards, so you see how much power it has. Also the sport mode makes sense when you're going off-road and you want to induce some wheel spin. For example, as I've been showing in those um, some of those action, action shots, when you want to turn the wheel around, for example, or when you want to um, want to lift the front wheel up, for example, or if you're preparing for a jump, um, for you know for, for some gap, then you want to lift the front wheel up. Then it can make sense to be in the sport mode. Other than that, uh, in normal road driving, it rather makes sense to remain in the eco mode. It's not so um, so so stressful, not so powerful, and really way enough for the road. You can. not even in the eco mode, you can't even use all the um, capacity, all, all the performances this motorcycle really has. So, and you can really have both things as this motorcycle is so silent, you just have to you know this small sound then. You can have a really relaxed ride because of the silence and just want to cruise. At the same time, it has so much power from the electric motor that you can have you know, a really pushing, a really thrilling ride. And I think this is really something uh, which no other competitor would be offering. And to me, it was really amazing that after riding this one here, I think I would never buy an, a motorcycle with petrol anymore because I was, I was so convinced of it. And um, this is really something very amazing. I wouldn't, you know, I, I thought it was, was cool, but it's that cool. I really didn't expect it. It's really so much fun to ride, more fun than I ever had with any other motorcycle, with you know, because I'm riding a couple of different classic motorcycles. So this was really amazing fact to me. And with 100 kilometers of range, I'm really okay with that. If you think about other small Enduros, they don't have a big fuel tank. So there's not so much difference when you think about electric cars. When you there have like 200 kilometers of range, that's a big difference to a normal petrol car which has like 600, 700 kilometers of range. But here it's really not the big difference to other small Enduros which are fuel powered. So that's actually also pretty much okay. And charging it up is also pretty easy. So I think it's also a very interesting, different approach to you know, alternative, alternative mobility in general. And of course, especially if you're a motorcycle rider. Well, then it's about the costs. 
12,000 euros is the official price. That's of course a lot and way more expensive than a normal fuel competitor. Well, when those uh, motorcycles will go into mass production, then they will also get cheaper. Also, if you think about China, for example, where electric mobility on two wheels is very important, all of the scooters running there are already electric. They have to be. And that is something that is definitely coming. So it seems to be that electric mobility is even easier for two wheels than for four wheels. So um, this can also be a step towards the next future mobility. So thank you very much for watching this review. I hope you enjoyed this bike episode. I really did enjoy it. And also tune in to our next cars or also our industry background stories. Thank you.